Hello, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And thank you for turning in uh, my channel. Thank you for all of you who have watched my the series of my testimonies. Thank you for your comments. Thank you uh, for sharing your story with me. I bless the Lord to have all of you here in my YouTube channel. And I wish you all a happy holiday. And may God be with you during this um, end of the year season. May the hand of God protect you and all your families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the reason why you're seeing me here again today is uh, I'm still in the series of my testimonies. In one of my videos, I said that I was going to come back and talk to everybody about some of the false teachings. So if you haven't watched um, this video, like here, I'm going to put the link in the description box so you can watch it. Inside, I was explaining to everybody that early in my teenage life, I met this so-called woman of God. I'm calling her so-called woman of God because... Um, Truthfully, in my experience, um, developing or growing in that uh, specific area of um, her band, I didn't find anything holy or anything of God. All I found in that, um, in that place was um, either half truth or just living for God by our like by tongues, so not by by works. Amen. But we are called to live for God in our everyday life, to honor the Most High God with our works, with everything. Because the Bible says, may everything in me praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I mentioned that I was going to come back and share with all of you uh, some of the teachings that was falsely and you may come across those teachings today. There are people out there like talking about those false teachings. And if you are not vigilant, you can be led astray by these false teaching. But they are of the devil and they are of the Jezebel spirit to lead as many Christians astray. So one of the sisters here in my YouTube channel, may God bless you, my sister. I'll put her comment here. She came across one of my videos. As she was watching these videos, she heard where I said that I was going to come back and debunk all those false teachings, but I'll do it little by little. I know sometimes it takes a while for me to come and do a video. Why? Because when I say that I will be back, I'll come back to do this video and then life happens. I get busy with life and just a lot of things work and all that. And this takes years, like usually years for me to come back. But one thing I understand, it is the will of God uh, to bring me in front of you in a certain period so that I just don't come for visibility. So I just don't come to show myself to you, but so that I come with a powerful message to lift your spirits up or to bring you closer to, to the creator. So may, <clears throat> excuse me, may the Lord God bless you and thank you for joining us today. So one of those preachings, I'll just go straight ahead. One of those preachings was this woman, she would tell us first, this is um, the first one, because today I'm only debunking two of these teachings that can help you if you come across someone who's um, saying those things just so you know the truth. Amen. So this woman would tell us, you can literally live a sinful life every single day because remember, we were in a band, so a gospel band. We were singing, dancing, performing, ministering in churches, in TV shows, Yes, but not for the glory of God. It was all for, for fame. It was all for um, control. Like there was a lot of reasons behind it because uh, finally God has finished 
that's banned. So like today, it's no longer exists because it wasn't of God. It was only using the name of God to entertain. But in reality, a lot of things that was happening in there wasn't of God. And you can see that even today. There are so many people who think they are pleasing to God, who think they are singing for the glory of God, but they are singing for their own glory, for the, the self, like, to, like um, those people who have made their talent or the gifts like an idol so they become idols they, they call themselves stars like they are no different with secular musicians amen so one of the teachings i received was you can live a sinful life you can so when i'm talking about sinful life you know guys there are this list of sins that are listed in the bible and the bible addressed them as sins Amen. I know these are the things that the world try to make them look um, not that heavy. You know, like they would call adultery an affair. They would call fornication. Um, I don't know. Like just, just having a friend, you know, dating. So it's not fornication, but it's just dating a good friend of mine were dating and they would call like homosexuality um a gay so they have those vocabularies to make light of the sin you know what i'm saying the things that the bible lists as sin as sins i mean so the world has really some uh, vocabularies to make them really look cool or light yeah so i will pick one of these vocabularies. For instance, she would tell us, you can fornicate, you can, um, like, you can um, be uh, unrespectful to people, like, you can be pride, you can do this, you can do that. But remember one thing, before going up on stage to sing, that is the time when you should come and confess your sins to Jesus and ask for forgiveness and there God will always forgive you and when he forgives you you go on stage to perform or to minister then God will manifest himself because you just made peace with him right before going on the stage to perform or to sing like you've already made peace with God so he will be there the glory of God will still fill the arena or will fill the place. Just make sure, even if you are living a sinful life, that you come to, to do like your forgiveness prayer unto God right before you go on stage. So let me tell you something about that. There are so many Christians today who, who think they can just live... Um, a sinful life from Monday to Saturday and Sunday morning they can go to church confess their sins they will be forgiven you know uh, the problem with that is God is a merciful God yes God forgives all our sins yes he does but the issue with this way of thinking and doing things is first of all it's not the whole truth this is a lie of the enemy the enemy cannot preach the truth the enemy is the father of all lies so he literally cannot um direct you towards your salvation no the enemy came to still destroy and ruin he didn't come to lead people to salvation so whatever the enemy presents to us is not the whole truth it's a, tr a halfway truth if i may say so it's not really, really the truth, but it is halfway the truth. Amen. Because guess what? You say to yourself, well, I'm going to live um, a sinful life. I'm going to fornicate. I'm going to go to clubs. I'm going to dance and just like have fun in a godly world, in, like in, in a, a non-godly way. You know, I'm, I'm just going to live like everybody. I'm going to do uh, whatever whatever 
Gentiles are doing out there, whatever uh, pagans are doing out there. So I'm going to be like them. Meanwhile, you are a child of God and you are waiting for a certain time to confess your sins and ask forgiveness or let, let me say repent because in this case I'm not I'm not even talking about repentance because she never preached us about repentance because the true meaning of repentance is to turn away from your old ways to turn away from the sins that is literally separating you from God amen but this is not what she was telling us so what she was teaching us was you can live a sinful life. You can be in your sin. Like keep your sins with you. Do not repent. But only ask. Like ask God to forgive you. Or confess your sins. Right before uh, ministering. Or right before uh, performing in a church. Because we are doing the work of God. We need the glory of God. We want people to, to really feel emotional when we sing. But the only way you can touch people when ministering is if you are at peace with God. So we have to make peace with God that moment when we are going on stage to perform. We have to be in agreement with God. After performing, you can go back to your way of living. You can go back to your life and do whatever that pleases to you. That is literally what we were told. And you know the big danger is... What if that Sunday that you are waiting to come for you to go and not repent but confess your sins doesn't come and you passes away? What is going to happen to you if you die in sin? This is where I found um, her preachings being of the enemy because those preaching was literally... Um, trying to seduce the people who were following her, the people who were in her band, to remain in a sinful life and not even bother to repent. So my brothers and sisters, you need to know there is a huge difference between repentance and confessing, confessing our sins. There is a big difference. You may confess your sins, but if you do not turn away from them, it's just like you confessing your sins to God. You ask for forgiveness and the next day you go again, live on the same roads, on the same ways. You're going to do the same things. You trust me. This isn't repentance. This is not repentance. Amen. This isn't repentance. And if we don't repent, from our sins and that the Lord comes or our day like our final day comes and we are found in those sins we will not see God I know he is a merciful God but there are these sins that the Bible has already listed as sins and we know we really really know these are sins like premeditated sins we know these are sins and not even if the, but just let's assume that the Bible wasn't there. But we have the moral law. Like every human being, you can be arrested for stealing. You can be arrested for causing trouble into a marriage. Well, here in America. There are so many things that even the worldly law, like the laws in this world, in every country, define as wrongdoings. And those things are wrong, are morally wrong, like prostitution, solicit solicitating prostitutes, like it's illegal, all those things. If the institutions of this world can classify those things as um, illegal activities and punishable by law, how about the Most High God? Hallelujah. And there are things like this, we already know these are sins. So let me tell you something. Do not allow anybody to come and tell you you can dwell in those things. You can do all those things, but make sure you just confess those sins to God or to the priest or to whoever, I don't know, on Sunday. 
Amen. Because death can find you in the middle of the week. Where are you going to go if you die in these sins? Hallelujah. If you are not strong enough to quit, to turn away from all these sins, I will encourage you to keep on living in sin. But I will encourage you to plead upon the grace of God. And I know he will help you get out of there. Because you are pleading for a reasonable cause. And God will help you get out of there. Hallelujah. And the second thing was, this woman could make us come and confess to her. So she wanted to know everything we were doing. Why? Because the spirit that was working within her was the Jezebel spirit. A controlling spirit to control people's mind. And whenever she knows that your hands are now dirty and she has something to hold on to you, she will use the things you confess to her to try to drag you uh, down or to keep you like in her circle. Because she will threaten. I've seen some people who really um, just undermined her. Because this woman um, was really working in the Jezebel spirit like controlling people. She can come gossip with you and take only what you said, publish it, if you do not agree with her. In some ways. And she knows everybody expects her to be, uh, to be a crazy person. So everybody expects something wrong from her. But you, nobody expects to see something wrong in you so when she talks about you in public that you did this and that with her so people will be more surprised that you two have been doing this with her you know what i'm saying so this is the kind of person she was and she would try anything to ask you questions to just to know whatever you've been doing whatever you are up to just so she can cut you with dirty hands and that she can use those allegations against you once you try to break with her, once you try to get away from her. And let me tell you something. This is actually some of um, the manifestations of the Jezebel spirit. God willing, I'll come back to talk to you about all the manifestation, manifestations of the Jezebel spirit, the characteristic of the Jezebel spirit. Amen. It's not a subject for today, so I won't go over it. Amen. So like, like I was saying, this is how this woman was operating. And for that, I have something to tell you too. Only God can forgive your sins. There are some of the sins God will tell you to go and confess them in public. But some God will tell you. So there are a criteria of sins that God wants people to confess in public. Like if you were involved in witchcraft, so things like that, you have like armed so many people, cause arm to like family. God will allow you to go speak up so these people can heal. And so yourself can heal too. And the way God uses, excuse me, and the way God uses this method is mostly through testimonies. So you see, most people who were involved in witchcraft, they finally or they eventually have to come and confess publicly whatever they were doing in the dark because it's a part of their deliverance. So th that confessing is a part of the deliverance. Amen. But don't allow anybody to come and tell you you have to go and confess your sins to them. No. Listen to God. God talks with everybody. He knows all his children and he speaks to them through his words. Read the Bible more often. Just read the Bible more often. People will not play with you. Amen. The third thing, third thing, so I said I was going to only talk about two, but I'm going actually to add one more and then later. I'll talk about another one, God willing. 
So the, the other, the, like the third thing was, so she would tell us that God is so graceful. He is so merciful. He is so love. Like whatever you do, God will always forgive you because we are living uh, under his grace. And we are like this time or this period or this era, we are under the grace of the Most High God. We are under um, His grace. So, like, whatever you do, God will forgive you. And she would, like, she would base herself on this scripture that, I, I don't know if it was a, a scripture, but she would just say, like, every sin is a sin before God. Every sin is a sin. And um, whatever you do, God will forgive you regardless of intentions that you did that thing. So don't stop yourself from doing anything, thinking like, uh, this one is way too heavy. I can't do it. No, do whatever you want because all the sins wait the same in front of God. Amen. And that was a very big lie. Yeah, I'll say that again. A very big lie. Not even half of a truth, but it was a very big lie. By that time, when I started noticing that she was teaching us um, those preachings, those teachings that can really lead someone into a sinful life. Someone who maybe uh, was trying hard to be pleasing to God can easily be turned into an abomination before God. Just because of these teachings. So I was forced to leave this band. And God is the one who um, dragged me out of this band. And I'll come back here to tell you how God removed me from that band. Because I loved singing so much. I really loved singing. And not just singing. I was born to worship. I was born to praise. I was born to serve God. So I really just loved this gift of singing that's why i found myself um in this uh, band so-called band because i loved singing but uh, what i finally what i finally came into the conclusion of of seeing that whatever i was doing there i mean in my heart i was doing it for god but the environment was toxic for my spiritual growth the environment was really um, toxic. The environment couldn't like lead me closer to God. I had to leave, and I will come back one day to explain to you guys um, every like in details what really happened and how I left that band because not my mother, not my father, nobody told me to leave. I left. Because God told me he was about to burn that Sodom and Gomorrah that I should leave. And I left. So let me get back to what I was saying. Um, by that time when uh, she told us that we could get inspiration. Like for instance, let me just give you examples of the things she was allowing. You know, one of them was. We can actually, she was telling us, you can listen to this secular musician you love, try to sing like him, and then get inspired from them. Because after all, it's just music. The only thing that's different is the themes we're singing. They are singing about women. They are singing about money. They are singing about fame. We are singing about God. But it's the same, I mean, it's the same thing. They use guitars, we use guitars. They, they go to recording studios, we go there. And sometimes we use the same recording studios to record. So we can listen to secular music to inspire us. And one other thing, if I can pick, for instance, she would say, um, like, the per you can abort a baby. You can abort a baby right after abortion. You can... 
ask God forgiveness. You can confess that to God. He will eventually forgive you because he is a loving God. So when, when uh, she started talking about abortion, I was really so offended <clears throat> at the time. Uh, at the time, my brothers and sisters, I was 16 years old. I was really 16 years old and just kind of um, singing there and like, I really wanted to be there. Yes, let me tell you, I really wanted to be there and sing for God. That's what I believed. And to to also increase my talent to perfect my talent. Yes, I wanted to learn because she was <clears throat> like professional singer. So I really wanted to perfect my gift by being there. And this time when she started giving examples and she mentioned the abortion, saying that the person who commits abortion and the person who just insults someone, they will all be punished by God and they will get the same punishment. So why only choose to insult when you can also do like heavy sins? but still get the same sentence from God. And she uses this, <laughs> she uses this example of, let me tell you, I don't want to mention the names, but she said, like we have here in Africa, like secular musicians who are selling their souls to the devil to get fame, but they do not sell all of them. You know, they do not sell all of their souls like American, there is this American musician, uh, MJ, I'll say M, yeah, MJ, MJ, you go figure out, MJ, I don't want to mention his name here, so MJ, he, he sold his soul, he is rich, like in, in the, like, in the world scale, so he sold all of his soul to the devil to get, f like, as high as he is now, like in the, the world scale. But these Africans, secular musicians, they are consulting the devil only to get fame in the country. So why not go that further? Like give it all to the devil because after all, you will still go to hell. So these are the, the, kind, of, the kind of the things she would say to us. So when she mentioned the thing about abortion, that didn't sit well with me. So I kind of de defined, I don't define, defied her power. So I had to say something. Then I opened up my mouth. I told her, you know what? You are not helping us. We are in this. Hey, you guys, I'm going to actually put a little bit of, of, the music videos we were doing, I'll just put one here and a little bit because I don't want Facebook to strike me with all the, I, I mean, YouTube to, to give me strikes or things like that. No, I don't want that. I'll just put a little picture here. Some of you who are from the Congo, from my country, you will recognize um, the band where I was singing. But if you are not from the Congo, you might not recognize. And that's okay because I'm not doing this video to trash someone. No, I am doing this video to tell you, you are set aside for the Lord, for God's purpose. Do not mix, amen. Do not mix what you have with whatever preaching that you are picking up on the street. No, read your Bible. You will know what the Lord says. It's in the Bible. So right that time, I stood up and I told her, you are not really helping us. So in this band, we are mostly women and young girls, like really, really young girls. Underage, we were under 18, most of us. Some of us were um, in their early 20s. So I'm like, if, like, just see the conditions we are living in in Africa. Like, by the time, healthcare was a total mess. It was just a mess. So just imagine encouraging us to go get abortions. What is going to happen if one of these girls get on the on the table, on the, the operating table, loses their lives because you encourage them getting an abortion? And even if we are 
in a very well functioning health system. As a Christian, I wouldn't advise a person to go get an unnecessary abortion. No. There are circum like circumstances where like a mom is pregnant and the baby is already dead in the womb. So they have to operate to get the baby out. This is um this is reasonable, reasonable abortion. But why would you come and tell us young girls to do that? You don't care about us. You don't care. And my brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The Bible is clear. All sins are not punishable the same. No. All sins are evil. All sins are bad. But they are classified in levels. The Bible goes by far to tell us a person who commits adultery, who commits fornication, who commits sexual sin, they are sinning against their bodies. So if it happens that you get mad and you insult someone, you are not sinning against your body. Can you get um, sexually transmitted infections just by insulting someone? No. Can you get AIDS just by insulting someone? No. But you can get all those illnesses, sicknesses, but sicknesses by committing sexual sins. And the list goes on more and more. I'll also come back to talk to you about all the sicknesses and the illnesses linked with sexual sin. I'll come and talk to you about it, God willing. And yet I'm not encouraging you to go insulting people like God is being insulting people. No, that's not what I'm doing. Let all of us be pure in all the levels for the glory of God because we love him. He suffered so much on the cross. So every time when we sin, we are putting Jesus Christ back to the cross. We are crucifying Jesus Christ every time when we sin. So let's live a holy life for Jesus. If you think you are not able to separate yourself or to turn away, I said earlier, ask the grace of the Lord. Cry unto God. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how you are weak, how you can't do it by yourself. He will help you. He will help you turn away from some of the things that you can't on your own. So today I spoke about three points. Amen. Three points. I spoke about this woman telling us to only confess our sins when we were about to perform. I also told you that she would like bring us or she would literally groom us to confess our sins to her. The third thing was she would tell us all the sins are the same and you are getting the same punishment for all that. So there is no need of doing this and not doing that. Let me tell you something. We are walking to perfection as we are growing with God. Some of the things we let them go with time as we grow with God. You may let go of this today. You will let go of the other one tomorrow and keep on growing like that with the Lord. Keep on climbing up the stairs with God. Don't stay only on the first level since the day you've given your life to Christ. You are still dealing with those sins. You do not want to let them go. I know we will not become perfect the first day we give our lives over to Jesus. But this is a process. The Christian I am today is not the Christian I was in 2018, in 2015, in 2012. I have grown a lot in my walk with God. There are some of the things I had to let go for his glory. And there are more he will lead me to let go until he comes back. So let no one, nothing, nobody stop you 
from experiencing the love of God in your spiritual growth, the mercy of God, His grace. Living under the grace doesn't mean we have to keep to hold on to our sinful life. No, that grace of God should help us get rid of all these sins, separating ourselves from all wrongdoings and trying to walk in Jesus Christ's path. So I said it's a process. God does everything little by little as he is perfecting us for him. Just allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. Allow the Holy Spirit to do the job and he's going to do it perfectly. May the Lord God bless you. Uh, I'll hopefully come back to speak more and more on the things I'm promising to explain to you. So stay blessed, stay safe. May the blood of the Lamb cover all of us and may your year 2024 be a wonderful year. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and share the video to your friend and family. And also stay tuned for my upcoming album, single album. May God bless you. Bye.